Welcome. My name is George Pearson, and I run the How To Gurus channel here on YouTube. Most of the videos in my channel are short demonstrations of the different tools and techniques you'll find in various software programs. Right now, I have several hundred of these quick videos available on YouTube. This video, though, is different. This is part of a new series of longer demonstrations that I'm doing to show you how to complete complex projects from start to finish using a variety of techniques and tools. All of the images I use in these projects are in the public domain and I've included a link to the pictures in the video description in case you want to work along using the same images. Okay, let's move on to the project. In this Photoshop photo repair and retouch video, we're going to be doing this kind of an effect here where you have a vehicle in motion and you're getting the motion blur around the outside. Now it looks like a real interesting shot. You can actually do this kind of thing if you're careful with following a, an image with a camera. The problem of course here is that you would have to be driving in front of this vehicle, take your picture from the car in front, and of course that means that you may have some problems in here with jiggles, that kind of blur mode, the, you know, other things in there, other distortions that you don't want to have happen. In this case, we'll be doing this image from a static picture, just like that. And we'll then be applying that motion blur to the static picture. This involves just a few steps. We're going to be making a copy of our background, actually two copies of the background. We'll do that right now, so I'll just drag it down to the new layer button. There's copy one and copy two. This is going to be our background. This back here is just our safety. So I'll call this one blur background. There we are. And this will be the car. Now to do this, we want to create a mat around the car, a careful mat around the car. So we have the car separated out from the background, so we're seeing just the car. And then on the layer in behind, on this layer, we want to remove the car from the shot. And that's going to mean doing some clone stamping using the clone stamp tool right over here. There it is. So let's just get rid of that. So we'll start off with doing some basic clone stamp on this. Again, this is the background which we don't want to have any car on. The only reason I'm doing a clone stamp on this to remove the car is we're going to be blurring this car. And when we blur the car, it's going to be stretching the car's image out beyond the boundaries of the car. So if we do that and then we put this car on top with a mask around it, you'll be seeing a nice static car and then a blur of a car around the outside of the static car. So for our blurred background, we need to remove the car. You don't need to remove the whole car in reality. You can just you know come in just a little ways on this. Depends upon how far you're doing your motion blur. But just to make things easy, we'll take it out as far as we can. Now because of perspective lines and things in here, I don't even really want to worry about those, but we'll take those out again as much as possible. Again, you know, once we're in about about this far, it's really not going to matter, so we'll be okay. So we'll start off with the clone stamp. I'm going to give us a fairly good size here for this. In this case, on this picture, I'll, I'll do 60. It looks like 60 would be about right. And then I'll just begin clone stamping in and trying to match some of these perspective lines where we need to. I won't be going too fancy. So that is not that critical. Okay, so hold the Alt key down. You see here we have this, this wall of detail right there. I'm just going to copy that wall of detail and put it right down top of that wall of detail. And that should help to match that. It's kind of the same position. And see so if we can just get rid of that fender. There we go. It doesn't take much, as you can see, for that. I think that's okay. Let's now take just some random road. And I'll pull some of that in. Now once I get the basic clone stamp done here, I'm going to go back and just try to clean it up a little bit around the edges to make it, you know, get rid of any little things that, that are too obvious. Although the blur we'll be putting on this is going to hide a lot of problems as well. It'll be a nice technique to hide in those little, little odd spots that you get sometimes with clone stamping. 
So where you have you know, kind of detail like our lines right here, try to copy those lines in as much as possible so that you won't have any real major problems. It's a bit tricky sometimes you can see here to do a real good job on this. Of course I'm doing this pretty quickly on this sample because it's, you know, I'm not going to be doing this for a professional client. If I was doing this for a professional client I'd take a little more care obviously and do a little better job on this. But we'll do it you know, as best we can in this short time we have for this video. But you'll see as we come in and actually do the blur effect it's going to conceal lots of the little problem errors. They'll just disappear inside of that blur effect. Okay, this part's all pretty easy of course. I'm just kind of grabbing at random different grabs in here. Again this part doesn't really matter. That's not going to be showing at all. We're getting into a dark area down there so let's grab some of this dark and begin pulling that in. Each time we move off to the side like this, I am choosing a another area. So I'm going to grab and then clone stamp and then a grab and then a clone stamp and a grab and a clone stamp. So it's lots of reselecting on this. Again, this is going to be hidden by the car down there, so that's not going to matter. And right down here, as soon as kind of give us a bit of a line across there. And see if we can soften that up a little bit. That looks pretty good back there. Let's finish off a bit down here. And we're just about as far as we need to go on this. A little bit right in there. Okay, so again, the car is going to be right on that area, so that's really going to be hidden pretty well for us. We just want it to basically look like it's, you know, a complete image without a car on it. So there we go. There's that. That's our first step is to remove that car. Step two, let's bring the car back in again. And this time we're on a new layer, as you can see here. We're going to make a selection around the car and then put the car back on top of this image. Now on this selection I, I want to come in here and actually select in part of my shadow as well right down here. So I want to bring keep that shadow in. We'll soften up that edge once we have the car on top of our blurred background. We can then soften that edge to match. So let's zoom in and we'll start down here on this tire. I'll be using the polygonal lasso tool for this. And we can be just outside. You don't have to be exact at this point because we will be using this to make a layer mask. And once the layer mask is done, we can go back in and adjust the layer mask if we need to. And if you're using this tool and you run out of picture, just go just a little ways up into the ruler up there just off the picture and it will automatically scroll the picture for you. It makes it very easy to use. Okay, that's going to take me a few minutes to make this mask. So at this point I'm going to pause the video and I'll complete going around the car here and creating the selection. Once I have the selection done, I'll then bring the video back up again and we can then take it from that point. So again, I'm just going to be going around the car and making the selection using this one polygonal lasso tool. So this will be a few minutes for me and just a moment for you. All right, there's the car. We'll take care of the shadow in just a minute. But since we have the car selected now, we can create our layer mask just by clicking on the layer mask button, which is right there. Click on that. 
that automatically creates a layer mask based upon that selection. Let's now bring our background in. Looks pretty good. And let's just take a quick look at the edges. Our only real problem here is if our edges come in too sharp because of that hard edge selection. Now there is a clever little trick you can do about that to minimize that sharpness. Let's just put this back on the screen. There we go. And that's that we can do a little bit of a blurring on the mask itself. Now it'll just soften up that edge. So let's go up here to filter. Make sure you're on the mask. You see the white outline around it. Go over to blur and let's do Gaussian blur. You can see how that, that softens up the edge of that mask. I'm going to put this down at just one pixel. You can also just type that in. Choose again. It just, just softens up. If I zoom in, you can see how it just softens up the edge of that mat. So that takes care of that softness of that mat. Now we're going to be bringing in the shadow again. I want to have a soft edge shadow on that. Notice how we have black and that's hidden. So black hides and white shows. So bringing back in our shadow is just a matter of using a white paintbrush. Make sure you're on the mask still. Go over to paintbrush and let's make sure that we are on a, a soft brush, hardness of zero. And then I know that the right in here someplace is where the shadow is. And I'll just kind of paint along on the mask. I'm not painting in, in the black, I'm just painting on the mask. And that will bring that shadow back in in a very soft manner on the edges because I'm using a soft edge. So that's the original shadow showing through. And that's all looking good. Okay, so far so good. We may want to come back and tweak this mat a little bit once we have the blurred background in if it doesn't look natural. If it looks fine, then everything is okay. Let's now come down to our blurred background. And let's just hide that for a second. For the blur effect, we'll be using a special filter up here, and it's one of our blur filters and the radial blur right here. Now we have two kinds of blurs. A spin blur, which we don't want, and a zoom blur, which we do want. Now the problem with the blur here, with the radial blur, is that this is a very, very old filter. We don't have any preview in here. There's no way to preview this. So all you can do is try to find a setting. I have this one set at 24. Choose OK and see what it looks like. See if it blurs it enough. Actually, that's not enough. So let's undo that and we'll try the blur again. Make sure we're on zoom. Let's bring it to about 50. You can kind of get an idea of how much blur is happening just from this little preview, this little, little window here rather. But doesn't really show you. That's pretty good. That's the amount of blur that I want to have happening in here. Notice how once the blur is in, it hides all those edges that we had where I wasn't being that careful about the ground. That's what I meant, is that the blur is going to hide that so you don't have to be quite as critical. Let's bring our car back in on top and see how we look. It looks pretty good, except for just a little spot that I'm looking at right there. So there's one little line right there which is a ground line and that's in this image. So I want to fix that one little bit. And we can do that. Make sure we're on the right layer and you're on the image of the layer, not the mask. Let's zoom in a little bit. See there's a, a bit of a problem here with that ground in here is not blurred. So I want to blur the ground down in this. Now we're doing a, a radial blur of course, but it's just pretty soft. It's basically soft blur. So let's go up and let's grab our blur tool. I'll bring that blur setting down a bit. And let's just come in here and paint around a bit with this blur tool. And just blur some of that stuff out on the ground. That will help to blend in that ground bit with the image. That's pretty good. Now to take us one step further and put a little bit of that motion in there. Let's change this over here to the smudge tool. And this actually allows you to, to pull the image back and forth. So I'm just going to pull it back and forth on the same line. 
and matching the angle of that blur. And it will tend to blur those areas. You know, any that little grain and so forth, it'll blur that in the same direction as the motion blur on the ground. And that looks pretty good. Now there's a little spot way up underneath in there that I could do the same thing on if I really want to be critical about it. A little bit in behind here, kind of hard to see. Let's just use just this smudge tool, real small this time, so it'll fit. And same thing, just a little bit of blur in there, so I don't have any any real problem showing. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's put this back on screen again, fit on screen. And there we go. There is the car caught in mid-motion on our drive here with this effect. One last little thing you might want to, if you want to be really critical about this, and that's the tires here. This looks as if it was taken with a flash so that your tires are motionless. You may want to come in and blur the tires themselves out just a little bit. Again, that can be done with just the, the regular blur tool. So they're not quite as in focus. They, they shouldn't be as in focus as the rest of the car since that there should be a little bit of a motion on that. So a little blur there, a little blur over in here. If you want to be really picky about this, you could come in and actually select out just the tires themselves and do a little bit of motion blur on the tire to blur the tires vertically. Kind of an extra credit thing. This is good enough for this, but extra credit, let me just show you where that is. You would come in and select just the tire itself without the bumper. Filter, blur, and then motion blur allows you to blur something in a specific direction. You can then match this to the angle of the tire and give the tire just a little bit of a blur. And that would then give that same effect. You have to be very, very careful with your selection. If you do that, make sure you're selecting just that middle section in there. Okay, there we go. That is how to add a motion blur onto a picture. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this training video.